and welcome to another video of Clarity Education Limited. So today I'll be talking about a topic called Newton's Law of Cooling. This belongs to the chapter Thermal Properties of Matter of Class 11 Physics and it's a very important topic with respect to different certain competitive examinations and also regarding the annual examination for Class 11. So let's begin. So basically I'll be talking about the proof of Newton's Law of Cooling. Newton's Law Newton's law of cooling. Okay. So this law basically states about the, the rate of fall of temperature of an object when it's kept in a surrounding whose temperature is less than that of the object. Like when you, have, when you have an object whose temperature is at T, and suppose you have kept it in a surrounding whose temperature is at T0, provided T is greater than T0, then of course, that object would radiate some energy because obviously the heat flow happens from higher temperature to lower temperature. So the rate of fall of temperature, at what rate would that temperature change occur in the object? That would be determined about by Newton's law of cooling. So let's look into it. Let's look into the proof. Let's look into the statement first. So it states that rate of fall of temperature temperature is directly proportional proportional to the difference in the temperature understand this first we need to know uh, know some details some information about a very famous theory that states that basically says the says about the rate of heat transfer the rate of heat released from an object when that object is kept in a surrounding whose temperature is less than it it's called the Prevost theory of net heat released and that states that the heat emitted by the object minus the heat absorbed by the object of course I'm talking about the rate of heat so the rate of heat emitted by the object minus the rate of heat absorbed by it that is the net heat released by that object Okay, that is the net rate heat released by that object. So first, let me just talk about the formula that Prevost theory of net heat release gave. So let me just change the color ones. So from Prevost's theory, theory. It states that Q net net released that's equal is equal to Q emitted minus Q absorbed. So from Stephen's law, we know that in a black body, the black body uh, it is special because it's Emittivity and absorptivity is one. They are equal, obviously, we know that from the Wayne's law. And its emittivity and absorptivity, actually, its emission and absorption is actually 100%. So its emittivity and absorptivity would be one. Now, from Stephen's law, we know that the heat, the rate of heat flow is directly proportional to the area exposed to the incident energy and to the fourth power of the temperature of the object. So Q will be equal to sigma A T to the power 4 for the object, where sigma is the constant of proportionality or the Stephen's constant. And in here, the surrounding is basically considered a black body. So that the energy incident on the object will be the same. Sigma A, but the difference here in temperature would be T0 to the power 4, because T0 is what we consider the temperature of the surroundings. Now, the, that is the total amount that is incident of the object. But what amount of it will it absorb? Of course, that will be A sigma A T0 to the power 4, where A is the absorptivity. Similarly, it will emit E sigma A T to the power 4. E is the part which it emits. Now we know that E and A are basically the same, and I will replace it by anyone. Let me replace it by E, actually, because emission is what uh, is important over here. So it will actually be E sigma A T to the power 4 minus T naught to the power 4. So this will be E sigma A T to the power 4 minus T naught to the power 4. 
I will make myself clear and let me just write down what all these letters mean. So where E is emissivity, which means the amount of heat it basically can emit. Okay. Sigma is the Stevens constant. that is always equal to the specific heat capacity of the system into its mass into its change in temperature. Here that would be the fall in temperature. M into S that is the mass and specific heat capacity that actually gives the heat capacity of the system. And by definition we know that heat capacity of the system basically means basically refers to the amount of heat required to change the temperature of the system by one unit. That one unit can be one degree Celsius, one degree Kelvin, or one degree Fahrenheit. Now I have to also add a minus sign before because dt over here, d capital D, is a small change in temperature, d capital D, that is negative because fall in temperature is occurring. The new temperature would be less than the initial temperature. Okay, so that would be minus M S capital D T. Right. So this will be equal to obviously E sigma A T to the power four minus T naught to the power four. Okay. So let me consider that equation number one. So uh, let me just uh, put forth a condition that Newton actually stated. That Newton actually uh, proposed. That condition was that the change in temperature, the total fall in temperature, that is the temperature difference between the object and the surrounding, that difference, let me consider that del T, and that del T should be very less, very less in comparison to the temperature of the object, that is T, and also in comparison to the temperature of the surrounding, that is T naught. Okay, so del T, that is T minus T naught, should be very less in comparison to capital T and capital T. So let me write that statement. Let the fall in Temperature that's equal to del T. I've considered del T is cos T minus T naught. Del T is T minus T. So from here, we say that capital T is del T naught. So capital T is equal to T naught. Delta T. Okay. So next. Okay. So let us therefore. T naught to the power 4 minus T naught to the power 4. I mean, in place of T to the power 4, I can write delta T plus T naught 4 to the power 4. That's what capital T meant. It's delta T plus T naught, right? So, that, so I'll be actually substituting the value of capital T in this equation right here. So 
what is the significance of that? And why Newton actually stated that density should be very less in comparison to T not empty. Now you will consider, now you will understand it. You need binomial theorem for this, okay? Now you will be using the binomial theorem in this part, okay? So this actually uh, means that T not plus density, that will be raised to the power 4 minus T not to the power 4, okay? Now what I'll be doing is I'll be T not to the power 4 out of its second term. So Q net will be E sigma K T not to the power 4 multiplied by now in the bracket what would remain would be this one plus delta by delta to the power 4 minus t naught okay now now look over here as you can see that one plus delta by t naught now something special you can see about this one is i have previously stated that delta should be very less in comparison to t naught delta should be very very less in comparison to t naught which means that delta t naught is also very less in comparison to 1 it is delta by t naught is very very less than 1 now when you have a quantity as such 1 plus x whole to the power n then you have given the condition that x is very less than 1 then you can of course make it 1 plus nx where the power comes as the coefficient of x and everything else is the same so 1 plus x whole to the power n can be written as 1 plus nx where x is very less than 1 this is the application of binomial theorem right so that's what i'll do 1 plus delta by t naught whole to the power 4, I'll be writing it as 1 plus 4 delta by t naught. Okay? Let me write that down. So Q net, that'll be equal to E sigma A t naught to the power 4 into 1 plus 4, 4 times delta t by t naught minus 1. So here, of course, 1, 1 gets cancelled off. So I can rewrite this as, I can rewrite this one as Q net equal to E sigma A T naught to the power 4 into 4, into 4 del T by T naught. Now, of course, here T naught and T naught to the power 4 is cancelled out to be T naught Q, right? So what I get at last is Q net will be equal to E sigma A T naught Q four times del T. Now I can of course open del T to be T minus T naught. I can write that T minus T naught in case of del T because that's what we had assumed before. So we can price, therefore Q net Q net will be equal to four T e sigma A T naught Q into T minus T minus T naught. Now we come to the near end of this group. So substituting the value, substituting value of Q in equation number four, equation one. So let me just show what equation one was. It was this pink color over here, right? So let me substitute the value of Q over here. So what I get is something like this. divided by 
divided by n times this. Now here, what I can do is that I can consider this 4e sigma a e naught cube by m is a constant. Because of course, every single term such or constituting this term is a constant that I've stated before, one line before, I've said this. So I, I will consider it any arbitrary constant k. So let me consider 4e sigma a e naught cube by m is to be k in this case. Okay? So let me write that. K times t minus t naught. Now there you have your proof. Then of course see that minus d capital T by dt, this is the rate of fall of temperature of the object of course, that is equal to the difference in temperature of the object and the surrounding times of some constant. So of course, minus dt by dt will be directly proportional to t minus t naught, because this is the converse of the proportional constant of proportionality, where something is proportional, directly proportional to something, and when you try to remove the proportionality sign, then you introduce a constant, which is called the constant of proportionality. So here you can treat this k to be constant of proportionality. So what you get is minus d capital T by dt to be directly proportional to t minus t naught. What is t minus t naught? That is of course the temperature difference of the object and the surrounding. That's the proof. So therefore, minus d capital T minus d small t, rate of change of temperature, rate of power temperature, is directly proportional to t minus t naught. So let me hide this one second. So hence proof, this was the proof of Newton's law of cooling. If you guys have any doubt, any problem, then you can feel you, are feel, you, you can feel free to comment it in the comment section. If you have any complaint, if you have any criticism, you can of course feel free to share that as well in the comment section. If you have liked this video and learned something new, then of course you can like the video, you can share it among your friends, and you can subscribe to our channel, Clarity Education, and uh, wait for our new video to come up.